All right, hello and welcome back to my 2.5D RPG in Unity tutorial. Today we're basically re-going over the UI and instead of having it in the on GUI functions in a load of separate scripts like uh, what was done before, I've consolidated it into one sort of uh, using the canvas uh, GUI thing basically. The, well, I'd say new, but it had quite added a couple of years ago. Or I've only just started around to learning how to use it. So yeah, I will show you. So if I press tab, we'll see we've got our post-apocalypse personal assistant. And that and our, our acronym is probably the best thing about the video, but yeah. Uh, we've got tabs, so we've got stats, items, quests, and the map, which the map will come later. It's just there as a placeholder, but yeah. So first off, stats, we've basically just got the name, the health, uh, statistics about the player, and any effects they have. That's all pretty simple, it's just text boxes. For items, uh, we can see the player's inventory, any of nearby items or stuff in containers. So I can just take shit out of there and add it to there. And you can just like cycle through the items with these. And you get that. And you can also still equip stuff. Uh, equip, there we go. Still got an assault rifle, shoot stuff, etc. Uh, for quests, also we can select uh, available quests from this drop down. So we can see that uh, the objective is complete. So we found water, and now we've got to find bread. Similarly, if we can't shop him one, but if we can't kill him, we still got to kill the uh, NPC over here somewhere. I think, well, let's update itself. Yep. Um, we're out of the stuff. Yeah. You get the idea. So let's go on and see how this was assembled. Okay, so first off, I'm just going to show you how to. Uh, basically use the new UI stuff. So if you go to game objects and UI and say you want to create a button to do something, uh, there we go, big ass button. Uh, there, if we just go off that, then we can click uh, basically get this here. And if you don't have a canvas game object already in your scene, which is basically like what controls all the UI and it's fancy shit, I won't go into that much detail because I don't know. I just know how to create buttons and shit. All right, so we got a button here. Uh, basically, what you want to do is you can, well, you can change the color and shit here. And if you have your own uh, sort of like nine slice image you want to use as a button, you can replace it and all that shit. And you can change color and you can change uh, what color it is when it's like highlighted and stuff. So if I just do that, and we can see here, gonna work. Yep, you can see that it goes red when we press it. And finally. Uh, to add actual functionality to the button, uh, basically we can either have runtime or oh, you can have edits from runtime. Uh, yeah, so basically what we do is we pass in a game object here that has a script in it that has a method that we want to call with this button press. So let's just go to uh, NPC. Oh, no, actually, no. Oh, God, from player. So now if we use this drop down, we get a list of all the things on the player that have methods that we can call. So we've got game objects, the normal one, transform, bright renderer, etc. So I'm going to choose the human stat controller, and we are going to where is deal damage? Uh, deal damage, and it lets us put in the argument. So we're going to deal 100 damage. So we can actually see that it's doing it. So first off. So now, if we press this button, it'll deal 100 damage to the player. So you can see that, that we are losing health rapidly. So we're at 300, 299, 199, and just 99, and it should be minus one, and we've died. Isn't that lovely? So yeah, that is how you set up a button. I uh, just need to go over that quickly, just in case you didn't know, because that's pretty much the most complex thing with the uh, inventory we're doing. Well, it's not, but you know. It was a key thing that I wanted to explain just before I got into it. Okay, so first up, uh, as a child component of our Canvas game object, which has all the things for raycasting the uh, actual UI elements and whatnot, we have an object called UI Container, which contains both this new script called New Player GUI, which basically controls uh, whether the GUI should be displayed and what like tab should be on it, so if it's stats, items, and that. I've also got some stuff for the inventory GUI, which I'll go over when we're doing the inventory tab. Yeah, basically what this does is it decides whether this should be displayed by enabling and disabling its uh, its uh, 
child objects called the UI container child, funnily enough. And yeah. And then, so that'll basically decide whether we want to display the inventory or not. And then it also has this uh, UI container child has five, no, four. Uh, four. Uh, uh, so like uh, tabs or four other child objects are disabled and enabled based on what kind of tab you want you pressed. So, and all these four buttons are under a global UI container, which basically just keeps them there, no matter what tab is open. But we'll disable them if the inventory if the uh, UI is closed. So I'll just show you that again. So just got this bounce tab, so just press that, oops, click that, and it'll enable and disable UI components based on which one is pressed. All good. And I'll just show you the code for the, uh, where is it, the UI container. Uh, if I can find it, monodevelop, not uTorrent, no. Uh, yeah, new player GUI. All right, so we got a singleton for it, so we can reference it from other scripts, which basically is used by the player controller because we've disabled all our other uh, UI stuff. Instead, we just have a, on uh, the press of the tab, we call new player GUI .me .set display, which basically just uh, inverts the show GUI Boolean, which decides whether the UI uh, inventory or the UI should be shown or not. And we set the GUI object to be whatever that ball was. And if we are displaying the GUI, if you want to call refresh on it, which basically just sets all the tabs open based on this uh, my tab variable. Uh, my tab is just a an enum, uh, which basically has the four different uh, tabs we can have. So it's just an easy way to decide to work uh, to keep track of which tab is open at any one time. Okay, so you see that. So say if my tab dot oh, my tab equals tab open dot inventory, then we'd set the inventory object to true and then start quest and map objects to false. Yeah, uh, okay. And these objects are then just stored as a, or, and sorry. Yeah, and these objects are just stored here. Uh, so we just assign them in the inspector. Uh, yeah. So I've also got buttons for the stats, inventory, quests, and map. And we got then uh, again, my tab uh, in awake. We just set the uh, singleton and if, there is another instance of uh, the, uh, what's the word? Oh, fuck. If there's another instance of this, it'll just destroy it. Sorry, not with it today. But uh, like, yeah. And finally, if we just go to these buttons in the global UI container, which are basically just uh, these. So these correspond to the different tabs and they basically each call the press, well, tab name so you see this items tab presses calls the press inventory method quests calls the press quests method and map calls the press map method press map method and you get the idea so basically what it does is it just sets the color of the button just to show that which one's open sets the my tab variable and then refresh the ui so the correct stuff is displayed And yeah, that's pretty much it for the new player GUI. So let's go on to the individual tabs. Okay, so for the uh, actual stats bit, uh, it's actually one of the simple ones. It's basically just a load of text boxes, uh, which we display various bits of information in. So we've got like a name text box or a label here, just to say name. And then the actual name box is where we will insert the name. We got uh, something to display the health in, uh, something to display mis miscellaneous stats, and uh, maybe just to display uh, effects. And what we do here is we have basically public texts in the uh, stats GUI script for the health display, stats display, effects display, and name display. And what we do in the script, stats GUI script, is we get the player's uh, human stat controller. Uh, we basically just pull the information out of that. So play health, the player's max health, get stats of string and get effects of string. And we just set that to be uh, the in the corresponding text box. So in health display dot text. And to use like the uh, public uh, to use the, like text class or any other like anything to do with this uh, Canvas UI system that you know you put in like ages ago, uh, you need to use uh, 
uh, using UnityEngine.ui. And that is a simple one. So let's go on to inventory. Okay. So for the inventory GUI, it's made up of two main parts. The first is this item uh, GUI script, which you'll see is basically just controlling this box here. Uh, basically controls what the items name. It displays all the info about the item. So what its name is, the description, and has buttons to interact with it in the inventory. So you can drop it or equip it or whatever. And similarly, it does the same thing for items in a container or on the ground or whatever. This is controlled by an item GUI script, which again has references to uh, the text box for the name and the description and the button text and the two different buttons for use and drop and finally the image for the background. Uh, let's just open this up and it also has a reference to the item itself that is stored in this, uh, well, the item that is showing the data of and the container that that item is in if it is in a, if it is in a container. Okay so first off uh, again public item just the item it's in and these text boxes to show what the item's name is, what its description is, and what the button text should be. And then the use item button, drop item button, uh, the background image, because we need to disable that if there's not an item in it, so we can just hide it. And finally, the container that the item is in. Because uh, this might, well, this probably seems similar to some of the old GUI code in the container, because I can just copy and paste it and then uh, change it about a little bit. Okay. So first up, uh, we've got use item, uh, which basically just calls calls uh, human, basically just there uh, on the button press for use item. So if we look at the uh, actual go item button, it will just call item GUI dot use item on this particular instance of item GUI. And I've set this as a I've created this as a prefab. So if I change one like of the prefab in or it's in the prefab folder, then it changes all of them, which will just save the time. So yeah, so basically it just finds the human object on the player, sets the items user to h uh, to the human or to the player, and then calls the my item that use item. And then if you destroy the item on use, it just destroys the item and drops it from the container if it is in a, in a container. And then it refreshes the items in, and refreshes the item lists in the item monitor. So say if uh, you were just using an item off the ground, then uh, it would like immediately stop displaying that because you've used it, and stuff like that. Uh, actually, I should probably add a check if that's not. If my container equals more, else, we drop it and then destroy it. And then we call uh, reset item, which basically just sets all the stuff in this particular instance of the item GUI to be blank. So it sets my item to be null, text to be blank, description to be blank, contains to be null, and disables the two buttons and the background. So I think that's, it effectively makes the GUI bit disappear. Uh, next up, we have a set button text. So basically, if the item is in the player's container and we're comparing two containers, then we want to set the, build, the uh, drop button text to be store because we want to place it in that container. Or if we're not actually looking at another container, we just want to drop it because it'd be on the floor. And if the... Uh, what is the word? Oh, God. If this item isn't in the player's uh, container, or the player's inventory, then we just uh, change the text to take because we'll be taking it from that container and putting it in the player's inventory. So, uh, next up we have a drop item, which is kind of a bad name for the method because it covers dropping and taking the item from the container. So, yeah, that's my bad, but whatever. Okay, so first off, we have a check whether the uh, container is null. Uh, so if the container is null, this is just an item on the floor. So we check we call this uh, container dot player container dot add item to list with my item. Uh, this again, uh, quick recap. This returns a boolean if the item gets added successfully. 
And if not, it'll just stay the same. So if it does get added to the inventory because we've got a uh, spare weight capacity or whatever, then we call reset item to reset this uh, UI to blank. And otherwise, so if the uh, item is in the container, so if uh, this is in uh, the other items list of the inventory GUI, which basically just is a list of items that get displayed in the GUI. So this might be from uh, items in the world and nearby or another container or whatever. So, so once we press that, so if it's contained in that list, then we add it. If it can't be added to the player's inventory, like using the same method that we used in the uh, if my container was null, then we just drop the item from the container and put it on the floor. And then we just uh, reset the item uh, GUI. But if we could add it to the uh, player's inventory, then we just remove it from the container and set the container to be uh, the play container. And then we reset the item. Uh, reset the GUI so it's all blank. And finally, if this isn't in the other items container, then we just create the item in the world. So we just uh, drop the item from whatever this container is. So it actually should just be the player's container. So we create the item in the world. And finally, we reset the item. Uh, we've also got some methods to actually set the item. Uh, yeah, basically, you just pass in an item in a container. <coughs> Sorry. And this will. Uh, just set all the information. So my item equals I, item name text equals my item the item name, description is equal to description text. And I've added, I just added in the index just because I was trying to debug it because I had a problem where uh, they would appear in the wrong uh, inventory UI slot. And turns out that was because the actual inventory GUI bits were in the wrong order in the list. So that was my, my fuck up. You shouldn't have to worry about it. And finally, if we set all the actual UI bits to be active, and we can disable the uh, use button if it doesn't have a function. And similarly, for items on the floor that don't have a container, we just set them to be, uh, we just do the same thing, but we don't actually set the container. And that's pretty much it for item GUI. Next, we'll go on to the inventory GUI. All right, so next up we have the uh, inventory GUI script, which basically just has a list of these uh, item UI bases, which it uses to display items, as well as a couple of other buttons for cycling through the inventories and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, uh, one thing you want to note is uh, when I dragged them into the list from basically just the uh, hierarchy, it put them in the wrong order. So it's it. it I, I'll admit it took me like an hour to notice that they were in the wrong order, and it was fucking doing my head in. So. Just check that they're in the right order if stuff starts appearing weirdly. Because if it happened to me, it could probably happen to you. Because yeah. All right, so let's get on to the code. Uh, so first off, we've got a container name. Just says the name of the container that you compare it to. So it'll either be on the ground, or like nearby items, or a container. Uh, we've got a singleton, just so we can reference this. Uh, we've got two lists of item GUIs. One is to represent the items in the player's inventory, and the other is to represent the items that are not in the player's inventory, so in the, on the ground or in containers or whatever. But again, likewise, we've got a container for comparison called other container, and we've got a list of items called other items. These will be the items that were found in that container or just on the ground. And finally, we've got two ints. Uh, one is the uh, inventory index. And what is the nearby index? Uh, these basically are values that are modified by pressing where are they? These buttons here, uh, just so we can actually cycle through the different. Uh, well, we can cycle through the inventories if there are more than five items. That just helps us uh, view them. Uh, okay. So looks like that. So first off, we uh, set players items. So so have a local link called UI count zero. So it's basically just counts the UIs that we've used. Uh, 
So if we don't use all of them, then uh, we can disable them. Okay, so for basically have a for loop to go from uh, the inventory index to inventory index plus five to represent the five UIs we have to uh, display items in. And if UI count is less than five, so making sure that we're not actually running over there. So if, also, if X is less than uh, the number of player items we have, so if, say, we had 10 items or 11 items in the container, uh, but since we're going in increments of five, it go 10, 11, and then it still do loops for 12, 13, 14, and 15. But since we have this condition here, then we can just say, all right, we don't need to do anything because it's X is equal to or more than the player container items in container.count. Yeah, but if it is lower, so if there is an item there in the uh, player's items, then we just get that item from the container and add it to the uh, call the set item method in the inventory UI's UI count. Uh, and then add in the item, its container, which would be the player's container, and just an index for debugging. So, yeah, and that will cause the item to be displayed in the player's inventory side on the left hand side of the uh, inventory UI. Otherwise, so if uh, X is more or than or equal to the uh, items in or the players inventory dot count, then we just reset the UI. So it just makes it blank. And finally, after all that, we increment the UI count. And there we go. Clear up. We also have a method just to clear the other UIs. I don't think, is this, I think I've, Oh no, that is still used. Yeah. So basically that just goes through all the item GUIs in other UIs and we'll clear them. So that would basically be like if we're not near a container anymore or something, it'll just go through that to clear them just so we can't actually access the container from miles away just because we were near it once and haven't opened anything up since. Uh, next up, we have a method for set other items. Uh, this basically just works out what items should be displayed on the other side of the inventory, so on the right-hand side for whether it should be items nearby or if there's a container that's valid, then we use that. So first off, other container is equal to item monitor.me.get nearest container, which basically returns the nearest unlocked container. And yeah, if there is an applicable one. Uh, if the other container is null, so there isn't a nearby container, it will just try and get the uh, set over items to nearby items and we'll set the container name dot text to nearby items. Otherwise, it will just grab the items in that nearby container and set the text to be whatever the container's name is plus its items. Uh, next up, so if uh, there aren't any actual items in uh, any of the containers, so it would say like if we got an uh, empty container or something like that, or there were just no items nearby, uh, just to make sure that something isn't displayed by accident, we just call that a uh, clear over UI method, which basically just resets all the uh, other UIs. And other than if there are items though that we found, we call the uh, set items UI, uh, which basically, actually that shouldn't be there. Uh, that shouldn't be that. There we go. Uh, so yeah, so if other container is null, uh, it basically just runs the same as the player's inventory, just one minor variation. So, or well, two minor variations actually. The first is that we're using the near index instead of the inv index, so we can control the inventory separately. And yeah, so if UI so it goes through uh, near index to a near index plus five. If the UI count is less than five, then it'll go through this, and if the X is less than other items that count, then it'll set the items. Uh, if other container is null, then it just uses the overload of set item, uh, which doesn't have a container passed in. And again, if X is more than or equal to other items that count, it'll just reset the, uh, the uh, UI. And likewise, if other container is not null, then we just do this. So set item, but we pass in the other container and the index. Uh, finally, we've got the uh, methods for the buttons, which are linked up, so I'll just show you there. So if we see this one here, it just calls uh, inventory gy dot decrease near add, and uh, where is it? There we go. 
and increase NERAD and similarly for the GUI. These basically control the, uh, <coughs> what is it, the uh, inventory index values. So they'll increment them or decrement them and make sure they don't get too high so you can't break it. So basically, it, uh, so increase inventory uh, add. And it was called inv add before I changed it to uh, index. So that's why it says uh, that. Uh, basically, it makes sure if we're incrementing the value, it makes sure if the value plus five is less than the uh, number of items in the player's inventory. So if that's true, then it will add five. Otherwise, it won't. And for decreasing inventory, uh, it does the same thing. So if inventory index is more than or equal to five, we uh, decrease it by five. Or just in case, we also have a check to say if it's less than or equal to zero, then we just set it to zero. Uh, we do a similar thing for the nearby near index, whereas we increase it by five if it's not equal or less than the other items that count. And we decrease it if it's more than or equal to five and to check that it's not below zero. So yeah, that was it for the uh, thing. Let's just show you in action. We've also got the quest UI to go through, so I'll go over that in a second. Uh, so we can take those. Uh, we're going to quit one. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, shoot shit. And then that one. All right, on, on to the quest UI. Okay, so for the quest UI, uh, basically have a drop down which is another component of the uh, UI so it's just game objects UI uh, drop down uh, which basically gives you a drop down list which as the name implies uh, then we have the quest base for the currently active quest and we also have uh, text values for whatever the quest's name is the quest objectives and the quest description uh, then we call on update we call uh, set quest drop down and set active quest and if the active quest is not null then we set the quest data okay so first off for set the drop down uh, we just basically call the uh, clear options which gets rid of all the options in the uh, what do you call it drop down that's one uh, then since uh, we're basically uh, we need to add uh, to set all the uh, like different options in the drop down, we need to pass in a list of strings, which basically just show you what the options are. So first off, we uh, add the uh, basically create a list of strings with all the quest names. We add all those in from the active ones, and then we finally call uh, the add options with options, which is just a list of strings, and that basically sets all our different quests as part of the drop down. Uh, Uh, and this actually returns a an integer, uh, basically, for whatever item is selected. So since these are all in order, we can set the active quest by using that as a sort of index for the actual active quests because they're all done in order again. So active quests value basically returns an integer on what is selected. So we use that as an index to get the active quest that was selected. And since they match up, we just set that to be active quest. Uh, that's how we get the active quest. Uh, set quest data basically just sets the quest name text to the quest name and quest objectives text to be quest objectives text. Uh, I have changed this up from the previous one. Basically, it now displays it uh, sort of backwards. So the uh, current objective will be at the top, and then the other ones will be at the bottom. So we go through the list of objectives backwards. As it were. So yeah, so basically we have a string return value. So for x equals active quest objectives in quest dot count minus one, while x is more than or equal to zero and x minus minus, we go through the list of objectives in the in the active quest. And if the objective is done, it's not done. Sorry, we've reached the first objective. So we call objectives in quest. We add the uh, get objective text and add a line break otherwise so if the objective is done we return complete plus get objective test text plus line break and yeah that's pretty much it is that, is that actually working right i'll check it actually 
doesn't seem right, but whatever. It's not too big of a thing, it's just to make it easier to display. So yeah, uh, first he gets water, kill him. I'm shopping, so let's find some water in this container. Uh, water, water, water. Uh, let's go to quests. Yeah, that's the wrong way around, shit. Okay. Uh, Int x equals zero. So let's throw in active quest dot objectives in quest dot count minus one x plus plus. Does that work right? Okay, so quests. If you're hungry, find the bread. Uh, items take quests. No, I was right before. Just come on. Oh well. I'm so long. So yeah, let's just play it quite how I wanted. Oh well, I'll fix that for next time. So yeah, that was the start of our. Oh, that was us uh, remaking our GUI to make it in the new Unity UI. Well, the new wild Unity UI thing. So there's a lot less code, and I quite like it. Still struggle a bit with the like scaling of it because if I uh, do this and then maximize it, well, you know, so it changes, it'll like change scale if I have it in a different resolution. Or it won't change scale, as it were. It just stays the same. So I need to find out how to make that scale properly. And when I do, I will tell you how to do that in a, another episode. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode. Uh, yeah, if you've got any questions or comments or whatever, leave them down in the comments section. That's what it's for. Uh, go check out Loud or Quiet on Steam. It's really good. Trust, don't trust that one Russian review. But... And yeah, uh, go check out all my other stuff as well. That's in the description and, you know, generic plug of content that I have. Uh, what else? I think that's it. So yeah. Cheers for watching and goodbye.